guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I'm joined by my man Tag back on the channel. Tag, how you doing, man? Hey man, I'm doing awesome. Glad to be back. Yes, glad to have you. Uh, balance changes are in effect. The new meta is kind of evolving as we speak. The first thing that stuck out at me, I guess the first two things, are two cards that are definitely super popular now, at least early on the season, and that is Dark Goblin and Inferno Tower with just a 2% HP buff. It seems to be everywhere. Uh, break down why you like this deck, and we're going to be doing live ladder matches, guys. Well, first off, man, I can run this on my free-to-play account, and I can run it on the next account. So mm -hmm. I just really like the deck being all rares, and then that uh, log that is a pretty old card that you don't even need it to be that high level. Mm -hmm. This deck just functions extremely well for free-to-play ladder pushing, and it's also pretty good in GCs. I just like it because it's a quick cycling 3.1 deck. So anything quick cycling always gets my stamp of approval, since it always gets you better at the game. Quick interactions, a lot of interactions happening on the map. A lot of decisions, and then that always improves you. So I yeah, just like the deck a lot. It's cool. It's actually, believe it or not, I know my, my viewers will probably be shocked at this, but it's been like a long time since I brought a, a Hog deck to the channel because I feel like Hog hasn't been in the best spot necessarily. You know, some people still have success with it on ladder and stuff, but how do you feel about the strength of Hog right now? I mean, after Royal Hogs got nerfed, dude, I think that yeah. Hog is going to fulfill that role. So traditionally, that Royal Hogs Three Musketeer deck, I think that Hog Rider is going to fulfill that role. And every single cycle deck that had Royal Hogs, I think Hog is going to be dominant. Sounds good, man. I'm I'm excited. Let's see. Uh, you want to just hop into a match right now? I'll yeah, ask man, you, let's go. I want to ask you a few other questions too about uh, about balance changes as you uh, as you jump in here. So sounds good. I'm in first. Okay, sounds good. There we go. We got you. By the way, shout out to your clan too. I'm, I'm visiting you and your clan because you want to make sure you hold on to your trophies or, or your uh, tokens rather. Yeah, dude, I have like three or four trades going. I'm trying yeah, to match yeah, that well, can't mess that up. Can't mess that up. All right, so early on, going against Tombstone, perfect time to ask you, Tag. What do you think about about Tombstone? Is it is it dead? Is it is it okay? I don't think it's dead. I think it's better utilized in traditional decks of like Lava Loon or Golem, but not really in every single deck like it was before, you know? Mm -hmm. It was literally infiltrating into Three Musketeers. When you yeah. see a deck like <laughs> have Three Musketeers and Tombstone, I think there's kind of an issue there, you know? Absolutely. I feel like Graveyard, what you're going against right now, is, is really well positioned still in, in this meta. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's really, really well positioned. Obviously, he had an amazing start there too. Yeah. I think he's going to have Tombstone. I think he's also going to end up having NATO with Ice Wiz. So this is going to be a little bit difficult, but I think uh, if we just end up killing the Tombstone and then he only has NATO and we go for Ice Golem plus Hog, that's probably the situation that I want to be in. So, okay. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to be rolling with. So you're playing a little bit passively here? No. Definitely a little bit passively. Okay. I want to make sure that I can get a Hog Rider hit and then I'm just going to hopefully go opposite lane at all points. Let's Another just say... thing is, I, yeah. Go ahead. I don't really want to allow him to uh, ever get any damage with that baby dragon, so we're just going to be uh, relaxing a little bit here. Okay. Uh, oh, he's using that Inferno Dragon, or the Inferno Tower is pretty nice. Yeah, what I was going to ask is, is like, let's just say you had maybe a, a hog connection on the right tower for a few hundred damage to start out this match. Would you, knowing that you're going against a graveyard deck, would you have switched up lanes because you never want to go same lane? Or, like, how much damage is enough where you're like, nah, I won't switch lanes? Early on, I would have been switching up the entire time. I really okay. just don't want to give him counter push potential at all, man. Sounds good. He used his Barbarian Barrel, so I'm going to go in pretty hard here. And hopefully we can actually get some more out of this. Yeah. Oof. No hits, but he did use a lot of Elixir, too. Yeah. He's a, he's a feisty fellow, dude. <laughs> Indeed. So you're going in, keeping the pressure up. Dark Abo getting that connection there. The new and improved Dark If you Dark don't keep Abo. the pressure up, then he's able to poison, then you kind of just lose. So. Yeah. It definitely yeah. seems like an important part of this deck is is to keep the pressure high. Yeah, that Dark Goblin was really important. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to kill the Tombstone. Just so, not, having, yeah, not getting is... luck there on the connection, though. Yeah, not quite. I'm going to let that lock. I just want to preserve. So it looks like he's going to be going in pretty hard here. He's going to definitely poison that. So I want to also be applying aggression so he's not really going to be able to hit everything, you know? Uh-huh. So he wasn't able to poison plus it, so he ended yeah. up trying to defend more so. 
And look at that, you actually do a decent, you must have gotten a hog hit there, or was it just dark on? Yeah, I did. I, I, I got a nice hog hit. So nice. this is a really, really difficult situation to be in right now, but I'm just going to keep applying aggression so he's not able to go in for a graveyard poison. Nice. Look at this, Dark Ob, like that's the, the beauty yeah, of Dark Ob in this deck, right? He didn't take one, one HP of damage there, I don't think. Nah, never. Did you agree to the, with the Dark Ob buff over uh, Archers? Uh, so, I'm a special situation. <laughs> I actually really hate, more than anything, 2.9 Expo, so I just voted against it even though I don't really think that. So um, you were the one! I was joking. Yeah, I was one of the, uh, I take four. You tilted the scales, that's it. I, I'm a bad person. I gotta say that I, I'm not against the Dark Goblin buff. I just thought that, that maybe Archers deserved it a little bit. Oh, but, they definitely did. I yeah. just really you just hate, hate you just hate the deck. Next, Why not? Yeah. I, just don't. I, I think that that is the least fun I've ever had playing Clash Royale. I was playing against that. Also, I think I'm probably gonna lose this. This is he's playing this well, and he's playing like really formulaic. He's yeah, like, he's very disciplined. Yo, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not like giving up damage anywhere. It's kind of frustrating, actually. Um, so he's going to gradually chip me out. But this is also one of the hardest possible matchups. Um, yeah. As you saw, I've predominantly been using the Dark Goblin on defense. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I've been trying to stagger out my unit so he's not able to get absurd poison value on everything. But Yeah, but just the RNG really, and skeletons plus, yeah. Yeah, he's eventually going to win this one. So yeah. GG and well played to him. But it's, uh, if I get that matchup and I lose it, you know, I'm okay losing that. It's just one of the more impossible matchups. Yeah, luckily Graveyard isn't super, super popular on ladder, I feel like. Uh, as yeah, much as it nah. is in GCs and stuff, so. Uh, yeah, he played really well, too. All right, let's go ahead and get your next match, and we'll come to you guys once we're inside it. All right, guys, we're here. Match number two against Kaido. Yeah. All right, so, so after, like, things. Do you, what do you do when you're tilting? Not that you're tilting after one loss, but, like, are you oh, the kind um, of player? So, on stream, obviously, it's a little bit more difficult, yeah. but... Um, if I'm tilted or if I lose a game, I don't really think too much of it. The best thing to do is if you lose a game and it's like a bad matchup or whatever, and you play decent, I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Like that last game, I lost. It's okay. I just move on to the next one. Um, but, you know, if you lose and you make mistakes, I think, like, I just don't get tilted from that. I uh, literally am just like, oh, okay, I made a mistake. I'll play better in the next game, mm -hmm. opposed to uh, really getting frustrated about it and being like, oh, man, I... Uh, I can't believe I just lost. Well, you lost because of a mistake. You can always improve that and get better. Absolutely. So, I don't know. It's just I try to look at it as in the most objective way possible and try to gain something from it because getting upset doesn't really give me anything. It's totally true. Always, always very mature and rational attack. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I actually have a question. I'm going to start asking this like every single episode because it's such a frequent question in my comments too that I wanted to ask. And that is... How do you handle uh, or upgrading a deck like this? It is free to play friendly, which is nice. But besides Hog Rider, like what would you prioritize for upgrading? Uh, probably Goblin King, so it doesn't die to Zap. I feel okay. like that's pretty important. So yeah, I, I just wouldn't want to be able to play against someone that has a Hog Rider Zap combination, and I have a level twelve Goblin Gang, and they just zap it. It's probably one of the worst feelings ever because sometimes you want to get away with just defending with Goblin Gang a lot of times with this deck. So yeah. Another thing that I'm doing a lot with this deck, I'm not really going to go in for my Ice Golem with my Hog Rider when I'm yeah, playing Yeah, I list. noticed that, yeah. So the main reason you do that is you never really want to get wrecked by someone bridge spamming you and then you don't have anything to kite off his lane. This deck is pretty flimsy. It's a bait deck, right? So mm -hmm. bait decks really don't do so hot when you don't have support and you need to be able to distract things and not get spelled away in every single aspect. So Yeah. Yeah, man, it's really important to be able to do that. Yeah, and I see, like, uh, I anticipate maybe a little bit more Ice Golem than the previous meta, too, because of Royal Ghost, which, another card I guess I'll ask you about, like, what do you, how do you feel about Royal Ghost? Still still viable? Uh, Royal Ghost is still viable. I mean, the card concept made it overpowered, so mm -hmm. that was the main issue. Like, just being able to go undercover and gain damage. Yeah. Like, uh, just at a sliver of HP, getting damage. I, I just think that that was a bad card design, in my opinion. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of it being able to do that but nonetheless i mean it's still very good it's still yeah. a very good card yeah i think i that... agree with you on royal ghost and uh also uh tombstone one card that i do feel like took it really hard now that we actually play it is magic archer man I'm... it's so bad now Dude, it's garbage 
the delay, if you guys haven't tried Magic Archer, <laughs> the delay between him retargeting, especially it's it's so prevalent and pronounced against like minions or bats or any swarm card, doesn't matter, goblins, because just his, his delay in retargeting is excruciatingly long compared oh, yeah, to what it was. Oh yeah, it splatters and it's done. It's like, yeah. oh, bye, yeah. good night. I have to go uh, put in some more work. It's, it literally just doesn't. Yeah, did you think the card needed a, a a nerf to begin with, and it was just the wrong way to do it, maybe, or a little bit too too far? Oh, it definitely yeah. needed a nerf. Like, yeah, that was the wrong way for sure. Yeah. Like okay. that was an overkill. I think it could have been done a little bit better, but so you know, live and learn. They they yeah. can't make everything perfect, and I think Rumham has done a very good job. I agree. The one thing that if I were to nerf a card that I know that they're not going to nerf, I would definitely nerf the prince. I just think it just gets too much value. It's not good for the game. Uh, getting that much value, it's. A little bit too strong. Interesting. I would interesting. definitely, I would definitely change that, but I don't think they're ever going to change that. Yeah, we'll see. They did it once. <laughs> so <laughs> nah, it, it's, it's first day. It's this, uh, this match, by the sure. way, seems like you're 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 doing very well. Obviously, we're not even really paying too much attention to it in play by play. But and I will ask for more deck tips on the on the next match, guys. But uh, this match is so methodical. I feel like, right? You're oh yeah, of, I just don't want to make misplays. So. Yep. I'm. Playing pretty safe. Every uh, every single um, prediction that I can, I'm making good ones. I'm not really like over committing. Yeah. So nice fireball there. And yeah. It, oh. and you're, yeah. Did I miss that? No, I didn't. I was a little bit worried there. I thought <laughs> I it was. That's good always well. one of the. <laughs> you're like, I'll I'm never like, make mistakes. And it's like, <laughs> Kappa. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's always like a. I don't know. I don't know if you guys have done this before, but I really hate when I have a my finger placed down and then it just slips up or slips down a quadrant and then I uh -huh. misplace and I lose the game. Yep, yep, That's yep. happened before. So happens like, to me. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> uh, if I'm playing in a competitive match or whatever, I'll literally just drop the fireball directly on the tower if I know that I won the game. Like, I won't even drop it in the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good call. All right, well, let's yeah. do, uh, let's, oh, why don't you hop into another one? Here we go, against King Miller AA. Uh, so, Break down. Ah, do you want to do a level 12? Ah, Jesus. Let's see what he has first. <laughs> Alright, so here we go against King Miller AA. Starts out with a pump. Interesting pump placement. Yeah, he's going to have giant, uh, giant three musketeers probably, man. Yeah, yep. So the thing is, I have to go for the ice golem here. He's going to go in for a zap. I need to make sure that those stab goblins survive. If you didn't go in for the ice golem there, if you see a battering push, they're almost always going to go in for a zap. So you always have to protect your goblin gang. So that's one of the main reasons why I always over-level the Goblin Gang if I'm a free-to-play player. That's what I would do uh, on my mini account. So okay. Goblin Gang, that's why I would definitely level that thing up as okay. one of the first one of the priorities. Good call. Oh, Pekka 3 Musketeer. Ooh. So this isn't even going to be like Giant 3M. This is going to be Pekka 3M. Yeah. So he uses the Pekka, so it gives you an opening to go in for Hog. He's going to hoard you. Yep. I can uh, just go in for a Dark Goblin here and then uh, get ready to roll. So... I can see what he wants to do about the uh, Goblin Gang, and I'm going to go for that. And if he zaps it, does anything, then I can just Ice Cool Obviously that bat is going to be super annoying, so <laughs> yeah. I need to end up uh, eating up a little bit of damage, but that's actually a lot of damage, honestly. Yeah, that one bat, uh, I just geez. had to eat it. There wasn't really too much I could do. I can't like Fireball it or something, so. Yeah. As far as like starting plays with this deck tag, are you? I noticed that you go in with like a hog, but you would never like combo a hog with anything else and stuff like that, right? Just solo Not hog. Not really. I also didn't think he was three M there. Yeah. So I'm gonna end up being in a pretty disadvantageous situation. But yeah, I can just goblin gang here, and he's gonna zap it. It's not really scary. I'm gonna bounce on top of the. Wow, well, I didn't even shoot the lower HP one. That's really unfortunate, actually. But I'm still pretty confident that I win this game. Yeah. I made a huge display of just going into the Three Musketeers early on. Like, I didn't actually think he would do that, but he should pump yeah. up soon. Yeah, there's a pump. Okay. So he's going to go in for a uh, P.E.K.K.A. on this. If He's going to wait, and then he's going to P.E.K.K.A. Nice. He's going to Fireball so I can get back to... Nice. The hit the bats, too. And then... And nice another hit on the tower! Oh my god, that yeah. was awesome. It's really good. He's definitely going to go for 3M in the middle soon. I noticed the first time that he came with uh, with a P.E.K.K.A., you did not uh, use the the Tesla. Uh, is part of that because it's it's uh, yeah yeah. Um, I didn't. I don't think I had it. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. But yeah, we used the Goblin Gang supported. and it worked. And it kind of worked out anyway. But eh, I would have loved to actually not eat the bat damage. But yeah, yeah. 
Uh, ideally, I would have just ice gone kited and had the dark goblin shooting it. It's just uh, depending on what you have, you know. Gotcha. All right, so. so this one's looking actually pretty good for you. Yeah, it's definitely looking pretty good. You get your uh, is, fireball ready. Your alive, you're chilling. So. Nah, Pekka's not getting the hit, don't worry. Nope. <laughs> oh, I should have fireballed him out. I guess I'm being a little bit BM. <laughs> I was like, where is it? All right, there we go. GG's, man. I just got into another against Hippo. Oh, okay, sounds good, man. <laughs> He's crying, man. Why is Hippo he crying? Hippo Nautic. He's in a motor. Do you mute your emotes or do you keep them rolling? Uh, it depends. What, sometimes what I've been doing lately is just doing like a, uh, giving like a good luck thumbs up and then muting sometimes. It depends if I'm winning or I'm losing, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> if I'm on like a nice win streak, I'll just keep it unmuted, obviously. But sometimes if it's, uh, if I'm tilting, I'll just give the good luck mute or whatever. No doubt. So the what thing I you? just did there is I played against Skeleton Girl and I didn't want to use my log. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to overexert and uh, like spell when I don't need to. I can have units and counter push instead of like overspending, you know? Mm -hmm. So we see that this dude is running minor. This is That's a, your friend, minor buddy. control deck, minor poison deck with a uh, Spear Goblin hut. What do you think is Skeleton? One card we haven't talked about is Skeleton Barrel. Do you think that it's like, it's it's back and ready to be viable or are you not oh, so dude is back in business. By okay. the way, he overcommitted. So that's one of the things that I really like doing is I like defending first, no matter the deck that I'm playing, if it's a control deck, you defend first and then apply aggression. It's usually the best play. Another thing is whenever you're playing and you're able to use units instead of a spell or a building, those units always give counter push potential. So I like doing that way more opposed to going in and dropping like an Inferno Tower and then being like, oh crap, my Inferno Tower didn't really do too much. Sure. My Inferno Tower is not going to counter push. They don't have to respond to that. Mm -hmm. Every single time I drop a unit, I drop a Goblin Gang, I drop a Dark Goblin, demands a response. For sure. And as a result, you're seeing the ramifications of that. He just loses towers because he's down Elixir and my Elixir trades are way better than his since he dropped like eight Elixir, I think, um, into me. Yeah, it's just... A lot of times on ladder, people get really, really Dude, he aggressive. Might have, he might have rage quit this. I think he did. I think he did. Yeah. No, oh, no never no. mind. He's, okay. he's still rolling, dude. He was just he's that far behind, I guess, in Elixir. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Just one of those things. So I guess up. in this situation, it's probably better to drop the Inference Hour. Just make sure I don't get shrecked by a Mega Knight, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's not that bad. Yeah. Dark Goblin doing so much work for you defensively there. It's so OP, dude. It really didn't need the buff. I don't understand. <laughs> it is. A, I mean, it's, it, like how much, it just did like another 1k damage yeah. almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so good. It's. I think it was worse than the Ice Wizard buff. I think it was like, Ice Wizard buff was not needed, but this one was like a little bit too, uh, too good before it was buffed. I think the issue with the Ice Wizard, honestly, was people were using Ice Wizard without NATO. And yeah. then it probably skewed the win rate or something for yeah. uh, them to buff it. That's my explanation, I think. It, it might have been. The Ice Wizards was a definitely definitely a weird one, but so is, I don't know. It just like, I, I thought the Archers did need a, need a buff, but I, I definitely didn't think Dark Goblin did. But at the same time, like, I don't think it's broken or anything like that. It's just like a really solid card, I feel like now, but I don't know. Do you agree with that yeah. or? What's up? Do you agree with that? Yeah, I do. I think that it's a really, really solid card and it didn't need a buff. Yeah, well, hey, it got one, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video playing this deck uh, live. Tag, thank you so much for joining me, man. And uh, anything coming up on your YouTube channel? What are you working on for uh, for decks? Yeah, man, so I'm just covering the newest and latest and greatest GC decks. Um, I think I'm going to be incorporating some more free-to-play ladder sessions on my mini nice. account with 2.6 Hog. So that will definitely be fun to show. Awesome, man. We'll be looking forward to that. And uh, thanks again for uh, for coming on the channel, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. Make sure you check out Tag's YouTube channel. Subscribe to him. All the links will be in the description in the show notes, along with the deck link. Best of luck using this deck to trophy push, guys. It's it's pretty free to play friendly, so hopefully it will appeal to all of you guys, whether you're, you're Max or just starting out in the game. Another huge shout out to Tag and to Stats Royale. You can check out his player profile in the description below, along with my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Check out that as well. Guys, thank you for watching, and as always, take care, guys.